have a look at some wet weather driving. Obviously, um, being familiar with driving in rainy conditions and uh, through standing water is becoming increasingly important um, in the UK's uh, ever-changing climate. The first thing which will be quite obvious uh, to the camera is that we have uh, got the wipers going actually at their, uh, their maximum speed at the moment. And also the other ancillary control we need to be using um, with wipers going is our dipped headlights. So daytime running lights, which normally switch on automatically on the car. Um, in the first instance, they're too bright. They're intended for sunny days. So they are very bright lights. You can see on that truck there. Um, and they tend to cause dazzle through the windscreen of a rainy windscreen. The other thing is daytime running lights don't illuminate the red lights on the back of the car typically. So as you can imagine, if you're going down a road like this, or even more so on a, a multi-lane road, dual carriageway or motorway, where there's a lot of spray, um, a car that's not displaying red lights on a day like today can very quickly get lost in spray. So there's two fundamental things, and then the other consideration may be our heater controls. Um, if the moisture in the air started causing us to, uh, to, to mist up. The other thing to be aware of um, is the ambient temperature. So I'm just uh, looking at my temperature gauge, and we're actually down at 2 degrees. And I've got the ice warning that's come up. But while sitting in the car, I'm nice and warm, I've got the heater on. I almost wouldn't have known that had I not checked uh, the controls. Our intention is to turn left just before these traffic lights, so I'm currently checking my left mirror, left signal. Positioning, we've got a deceleration lane, so I'm positioning into that deceleration lane before showing brake lights, but then bringing the brakes in gently, smoothly but firmly. Clutch goes down, we're off the brakes, rev matching the gear in, gently applying the power. We've got a rear wheel drive car here with a reasonable amount of power. So on a cold wet road all of our inputs need to be very measured because we don't want to put the uh, tyres under an undue load. The other stating the obvious thing here though is the, um, the faster you go the more rain hits your screen. So if you've got your wipers up on full as we have now and you're struggling to see through the screen, the solution is to come off the gas pedal and make it easier for yourself. And then as you can probably see, <coughs> your visibility through the screen improves. If it's getting incredibly heavy, the most sensible thing to do is to pause your journey. So there's a lay-by there, if we were at all concerned, we can pause our journey. If we wait 20 minutes or so in the UK, typically the worst of a storm will have passed over. So, you know, unless your journey can't be rescheduled, there's always the opportunity to pause it as, as services. Particularly if you're on a multi-lane on a, a motorway where you get a lot of spray, um, pausing your journey, having a coffee, having a break, can give you as a driver a break and just make the journey more pleasant and safer. So we're now entering a more residential area. And as we can see, the roads are very, very wet. So the key thing in this situation, as we said, is to keep all inputs nice and smooth. So whether we're braking or accelerating or steering, the three elements that uh, require tire adhesion we're doing all of those inputs very, very smooth. You know, of course, we aim to do that anyway, whatever the weather. But when we've now got rain that is turning to sleet, that becomes incredibly important. Braking distances on wet roads, so emergency braking distances, double on wet roads. So we're thinking about that. So, again, it's another good reason for removing speed from the equation initially, looking at much further ahead and extending our separation gap on any cars we're following. Also we've got some pedestrians there, young pedestrians with their hoods up, 
none of us like getting wet. We all do silly things on wet days. We run across the road, we're more worried about getting wet than we're thinking about getting um, squashed by a car. So be very mindful of what pedestrians are doing, particularly young pedestrians as we've got here at school time on days like this. They're all being very sensible, um, but it's very easy for any of us just to get focused on not getting wet and staying dry, running across the road with our hood up and not quite looking. So as drivers, when we're nice and warm and dry in the car, we're going to try and uh, help pedestrians out and put in plenty of space to allow for any errors that they may make. The other factor that comes very important in these conditions is obviously your tyres. And we learn from the driving test how important it is to have a good tread depth. So we learn what the legal minimum is. The legal minimum is 1.6 millimetres across the centre three quarters of the tread around its full circumference. Um, the most uh, motoring and road safety organisations will tell you that three millimetres is really the absolute safe minimum. So there's a difference between what is the legal minimum as a point of law and definition, we've got to draw the line somewhere, um, and what is safe. And it's also important again to check that the tyres are in good condition, they're inflated correctly, because the, uh, the way the tread pattern and the tread itself presses against the road is dependent on it being correctly inflated. And that again is why the driving test asks you where you find your tyre pressure for your car and it needs you to understand how you check it. But it's important that you don't just do that for your driving test, you do that as a, as a driver and somebody responsible for your car and you check that on a regular basis. And the other thing just to be aware of with tyres as you become a car owner, make choices about uh, the tyres you buy, is that there are different qualities of tyre. And they now have a rating scale, every tyre is rated on an ABC type scale, A being the best, um, against their wet braking ability. I'm checking my mirrors now before increasing my speed. So on a day like today, an A-rated tyre in an emergency situation would stop this car many metres shorter than a C-rated tyre or lower-rated tyre. So uh, we all make choices about how we spend our money and um, you know, typically the, the best of anything to the better tyre is how you like to cost you a little bit more money. Um, but on a day like today, that seems uh, like money well spent. that we have to drive um, ridiculously slowly. We're looking to get where we're going and on a road like this, a nice straight road with good visibility for many hundreds of metres, absolutely fine to press on as long as um, our tyres are in good condition and our eyes are in good condition we're scanning a long way ahead looking for any standing water, any deep puddles point we'd be coming off the gas early and slowing the car right down. Point of the left hand bend with a junction on it. Right, so checking our mirrors and scanning into that junction as soon as we can through the hedgerow there. 
separation gap earlier just in case for any reason the road was slippery um, we don't want to just assume we could stop at the same point we would if the road were dry so in all cases we're just increasing the space between ourselves and all other road users so taking a bit of speed out putting a little bit of space in and keeping our eyes very much on the road 